Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about my Czech challenge, or as I called it, the five days to fluency in Czech. And I want to bring you up to date on, on what's happening. Uh, included in what's happening is a happening. Yesterday, um, I was driving to work, had an early morning hockey game. I'm in a hockey tournament, the uh, BC Senior Games. So far, we've lost two games. Uh, but I came home and uh, threw my equipment out onto the, onto the driveway to dry out in the sun and uh, then downloaded some of my uh, regular listening from uh, Chesky Rosklas um, and headed off to work along the windy road, Marine Drive, it's quite windy, and there's a bus stop there and there were these two girls hitchhiking, you know, in their 20s. And very rarely do you see people hitchhike, and, and, but they looked so kind of pleading uh, that I stopped and picked them up. And they come in and they said they'd been waiting for an hour because there aren't many buses along this route. And, uh, but I still had my uh, Czech um, interview playing uh, through the audio system in the car and they said, oh, what's that? Is that the radio? And I said, no, I'm listening. I'm learning Czech. Oh, you're learning Czech? Where from, from the Czech Republic? Wow. I mean, you know, I hit the jackpot. So for the next 20 minutes, I was able to speak Czech with them in the car. I mean, that was the first um, spontaneous conversation in Czech that I had ever had because I have spoken to my tutors on Skype, but I had never actually met someone and started speaking Czech with them. So I was just, um, that was just like, uh, wow, that was tremendous, like an omen, an omen. So I was very pleased with that. Um, we played hockey again this morning at 8 in the morning, so I had to get up very early, didn't sleep very well. Uh, we lost again, as I say. But um, before I get into explaining again the five days to fluency, I also wanted to comment briefly on a little sort of exchange on another video that I made recently, a video that I, I put out in Russian. It's part of my series, The Seven Secrets to Successful Language Learning. And of course, the seven secrets are one, to, if I remember them now, to put in enough time, two, to do things that are interesting for you, three, to notice what's happening in the language, four, to that grammar is more important than vocabulary, five is to be patient, six is to get the proper tools. I mean, even YouTube is a proper tool, MP3 player, accessing good resources. And the seventh and final point is to be a, a genuinely independent learner. These are my seven secrets, and I'm doing them in a variety of different languages. I did them, did this series in Russian. Of course, it has Russian Cyrillic writing in the title. And one of the people who follows my YouTube channel said, um, you know, please uh, add subtitles to the Czech video under this Russian video. Not, sorry, no, he didn't say please. You should make subtitles to your Czech video. So I replied, first of all, the video is in Russian, and second of all, it takes too much time to make subtitles. I think verbatim, that's what I said. So then this other person comes on and says, uh, you seem very rude, uh, you should lighten up, have some wine, bring some life, some love into your life. I don't know what sort of thing. I, I must say, I got quite annoyed at this, and maybe I'm perceived as a very nasty, crotchety old guy, which is fine. I don't mind being a crotchety old guy. Why does everybody have to go around being so, you know, it's nice to be nice. I'm nice to people. I, you know, I'm happy. I'm, I don't think I have an unpleasant personality, but you know, there's a limit. Like on the internet, it seems that everybody gets on everybody else's blog and posts smileys and, oh, brilliant blog, wow, that's just so good and uh, thank you. And I don't know, I just uh, don't do that. And uh, it doesn't bother me that some people find me a little crotchety. I like crotchety people sometimes, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, but if someone put out a video in a language that I didn't understand, uh, and I wasn't sure what the language was, I would say, what language is that? I wouldn't say, uh, if someone spoke in Arabic, I wouldn't say, please, no, no, please, you should make subtitles to your Farsi video. I wouldn't do that. If I wasn't sure whether it was Farsi or Arabic or whatever, I would say, what language is your video? 
And insofar as subtitles, it's a lot of work to make subtitles. I mean, it's a lot of work to make these videos. I mean, people have other things to do in their lives, and I'm not obliged to make subtitles. So, but what, what and then of course, in this typical internet environment, uh, the person, whoever wrote, you know, uh, lighten up, uh, you know, uh, should be nice to people, like 11 people get on there and give it a thumbs up. This whole thumbs up business is another thing that I find annoying. Who are these people? I don't know these people. Uh, they don't announce who they are. They don't provide any opinion. I think Steve is a jerk. I disagree with Steve. Nothing. Just thumbs up. It's sort of like a ganging on, ganging up, piling on type mentality, uh, which I'm not a fan of. However, getting back to the original topic, which is the five days to fluency. All right. Five days to fluency. No one in the right mind believes that you can become fluent from zero in five days. However, everything that happens in life in a five-day period or a 10-day period is the result of a lot of circumstances that lead up to that period. So I remember many years ago reading a book about the Russian Revolution, which was called 10 Days That Shook the World. Those were the presumably the 10 days surrounding when the Bolshevik, Bolsheviks took power. But there was a long period leading up to that. You could even talk about uh, the liberation of the serfs and uh, the uh, uh, you know political assassinations in Russia and the existence of different political parties and uh, you know the war between Russia and Japan uh, the first world war there's a whole bunch of stuff that led up to those 10 days so in my case I have five days in Prague those are the only that's the the only time I have in Prague so I set myself as a goal that I'm going to prepare as much as I can, so that when I arrive in Prague, I understand the language. I understand the radio, I understand, maybe not 100%, it's never 100%, but much of what's going around me, so that when I hit the streets of Prague, I'm able to function. And then I can then convert or significantly improve my ability to speak Czech because I already have prepared so well. And so my preparation has consisted of, essentially over the last year, of an awful lot of listening and reading. Our stats at Link tell me that I have read on Link over 750,000 words. Uh, I have also read on our, we're testing our beta version of the new uh, improved Link and there I've read about 250,000 words. Um, so I mean a million words on, on Link and I'm reading other books in Czech. Uh, so I've read the equivalent of, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 books in Czech. Most of it on the computer where I'm looking up words, I'm seeing the words that I previously looked up, I'm reviewing those words, I'm clicking on them for examples, and doing a bunch of stuff that helped those words sink in. So I did that for most of the past year, an hour, and now I'm really probably closer to two hours a day. And in the last month or so, six weeks, I've started stepping up my um, online uh, uh, discussions in Czech with a number of tutors. And uh, I'm doing this, A, because it's good for me. It, it, at this stage, I have enough words that I can actually understand what they're saying, and, and I can kind of express my ideas and we're not just talking about what my name is and this is a pen and and uh, you know the sun's out and stuff so it's, it's actually interesting we talk for an hour or even an hour and a half and it's an interesting conversation because I understand what they're saying I can express myself we have an interesting conversation and at the end of it all I get a list of all of my mistakes which I can study and I do that plus I continue daily listening to you know, these programs from Chesky Roslas, Jak to Vidi, uh, Nazuri Argumenti, and um, what was the other one? Yeah, um, Tolki Chesko Minulosti. And those, those, it's just an inexhaustible supply of audio and, and transcript for Czech. So, with that now, I, and the other reason, of course, that I have these four or five tutors that I'm speaking to is that I have to organize those five days in Prague so that I meet as many Czech people as possible. And unlike Benny, I don't think it's possible just to go out and randomly find people to talk to and expect that they're gonna humor me because I'm learning Czech. 
To the extent that I can do that, that's great. To the extent that I can go to a pub and meet people, tremendous. And I'm certainly going to try to do it, but I want to make sure I have people to talk to. So I'm going to have lessons, yes. And our lessons consist simply of discussions followed by a list of all the words that I didn't use properly so that I can bring them into, into link and study them. And so that's going to be my regime there. I've already spoken to Yarda, one of our tutors at Link, one of our members. We're going to have a video upon arrival and a video at the end, uh, maybe at a pub or somewhere. I'm going to basically video myself talking to random people. Uh, at least that's the plan. And just see to what extent uh, my check improves during that five-day period. I will arrive already with an ability to speak as the result of the work that I've put in this past year. And then hopefully it'll improve. The purpose of doing this is, A, it's partly publicity, of course, let's be honest, but it's because I think that this approach is a very good way to, to tackle a language. Set yourself a goal. I want to go to Mexico, Beijing, Seoul, Korea, Heidelberg, Germany, it doesn't matter, Ankara, Turkey. I want to go there in six months, a year, 18 months, it doesn't matter. Therefore, when I go there, I want to be able to understand the language well enough that I can actually take advantage of being there. So in order to do that, I'm now going to work very hard, primarily on my passive knowledge, my ability to understand both the written and the spoken language. This means a large vocabulary, albeit a passive vocabulary. It's great to have a passive vocabulary because you have to understand what people are saying to you. Otherwise, you can't very well maintain a, a meaningful conversation. So to me, it's a pattern. It's this five days to fluency, which can be two weeks. It can be a month. It doesn't matter. The whole point is once you set the target of when you're going to go there, then you spend the intervening period developing this tremendous, this deep, passive knowledge of the language. And if you can't afford to go anywhere, then you can still do this because you can say, all right, my five days to fluency is going to be five or six or ten days, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a period of time a year from now when I'm going to massively immerse myself in the language where day after day I'm going to do nothing but listen and read in the language. I'm going to speak to people via Skype. So I'm going to organize myself so that at some point in the future I can have this massive immersion, listening, reading, speaking, uh, you know, total concentration on my target language. So I just think that's an interesting way to motivate yourself and, and to set a very sort of specific goal uh, and to put in place a program so that you can achieve, achieve that goal. So I will be from time to time reporting on my progress uh, and certainly uh, when in Prague uh, I will be making videos so that people can see how this works and hopefully uh, this can inspire other people to do the same. And we can call it five days to fluency. It doesn't matter whether it's five or six or ten or twenty. But people who would say to themselves and maybe tell us and others here who follow this channel at YouTube, okay, I'm going to learn uh, Thai, I'm going to learn Portuguese, and my target is 12 months, 18 months, and my five days of fluency period of conversation is going to be at this point. And then keep a little record of it and so we can see how they do. Okay, I went a little over today. Uh, thank you for listening. Bye for now.